Welcome to Middle of Nowhere Gaming's News from Nowhere. I'm Courtney Osborne, and here are your top news stories from March 19th. Remember how bad Sonic Boom was? So does former Sega employee Stephen Frost, who was a producer on the title. Stephen explained why he felt the Nintendo exclusive game was so bad in an interview on the Sega Nerdcast podcast, stating, The biggest mistake in Boom was trying to cram too much into the game. Not only were we trying to make just a really good Sonic game, we were trying to add more to it. We overextended our grasp in some ways. We were trying to add a bungee mechanic, we were adding combat, we were adding puzzles, vehicles, hopefully a more compelling story, and a bunch of different environments. And it's just a lot, you know? If there's any lesson for me, it's that being too ambitious can be bad. Sega needs to learn a lesson from devs like Naughty Dog and understand that it's okay to delay a game until it's ready. But maybe that's just me. On a brighter note, Techland announced today that Dying Light has reached 3.2 million players since it was released back in January, making it the most popular title in the company's history. Other interesting stats revealed were that players have now killed 378 million zombies have climbed almost 12 million kilometers, which is equal to seven years of free falling, and saved over five million survivors, which is enough to populate Ireland. Have you been missing your favorite vulgar squirrel Conker lately? Well, good news. Conker is set to make his current gen debut in Project Spark on April 23rd. His return is titled Conker's Big Reunion and will be an ongoing episodic series set 10 years after Conker's Bad Fur Day. Players will also be able to use around 300 different Conquer assets to create their own games within it. The Conquer Play and Create packs will be available individually or bundled as digital downloads on April 23rd. And finally, as part of a whirlwind of Star Wars Battlefront news, we learned that Star Wars Battlefront will officially be revealed to the public next month at Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim, California from April 16th to the 19th. And then, on the official EA Star Wars Twitter account, they revealed that Battlefront will be available this holiday only on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. This puts the fear of a last-gen port holding back the current-gen version to rest. Phew. That's all for Thursday's edition of News From Nowhere. If you like the series, make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest video game news, and be sure and check us out on the website, middleofnowheregaming.com, where we all call home. Monk!